Kharkiv's the Melton. Ukrainian forces fought village by village on Saturday to hold back a Russian advance through this country's east, while the United Nations worked to broker a civilian evacuation from the last defensive stronghold in the bombed-out ruins of the port city of Mariupol. An estimated 100,000 civilians remain in the city, and up to 1,000 more are living beneath a sprawling Soviet-era steel plant, according to Ukrainian officials. Ukraine has not said how many fighters are also in the plant. It's reported to be the only port part of Mariupol not occupied by, uh, not occupied by Russian forces. Russia says it thinks about 2,000 fighters are holed up at the plant. Russian state media outlets reported Saturday that 25 civilians had been evacuated from the Azovstal steelworks. There was no confirmation about that from the United Nations. A top official at the Azov Regiment, the Ukrainian unit defending the plant, said 20 civilians were evacuated during a ceasefire. Russia's foreign minister says they've evacuated over a million people from Ukraine since the war began. AP correspondent Karen Chamas reports. The comments come as Ukraine has accused Moscow of forcefully sending Ukrainians out of the country. Speaking to Chinese media, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said the figure also included over 300 Chinese nationals. Lavrov offered no evidence to support his claim in the interview. Lavrov also said that negotiations continue between Russia and Ukraine almost every day. However, he cautioned that progress has not been easy. I'm Karen Chamas. You can keep up with all the latest news from Ukraine at our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. The British Foreign Office said Sunday that Russia is using a troll factory to spread disinformation about the war in Ukraine on social media and target politicians across a number of countries, including Britain and South Africa. Britain cited UK-funded expert research, which it did not publish, it said the research exposed how the Kremlin's disinformation campaign was designed to manipulate international public opinion of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russia says the Western media have provided an excessively partial narrative of the war that largely ignores Moscow's concerns about the enlargement of NATO and what it says is the persecution of Russian speakers in Ukraine. Ukraine says that's not true. Moscow has in the past denied uh, accusations by Western countries of disinformation campaigns. Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya, uh, the head of Guinea's military junta, said on Saturday that he'd opted for a 39-month transitional period before a return to civilian rule. He made the announcement in a speech broadcast on television saying the National Transition Council would put the proposal to Parliament. The announcement came after the creation this month of what the regime has described as an inclusive consultation framework that culminated in a conference boycotted by several prominent political groups. On Friday, the army-dominated government said the forum considering the issue had considered a transition period of between 18 and 52 months. Dumboya in Saturday's speech described the period he had opted for as the median proposal. Regional bloc ECOWAS had set last Monday as a deadline for putting forward an acceptable transition timetable or risk economic and financial sanctions. Guinea's ruling military junta let that deadline pass, however, and asked the economic community of West African states for more time for consultations to continue. Officials in Afghanistan say a bomb blast in a passenger van in Kabul Saturday killed at least one person in the second explosion in the Afghan capital in two days. A day earlier, an explosion killed more than 50 worshippers after Friday prayers at a Kabul mosque amid a spate of mosque attacks during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. No one has claimed responsibility for Friday's explosion, but most previous bombings have been claimed by an Afghan offshoot of the Islamic State militant group. Security concerns have risen across Afghanistan as the country prepares to mark Eid al-Fitr on Sunday. It's the first Eid al-Fitr under Taliban rule in more than 20 years. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News.